on the 23rd of March 2021, one of the biggest container ships in the world, the Ever Given, ran aground while transiting the Suez Canal. Due to its large size and awkward position, it apparently blocked both the north and southbound traffic, effectively putting the canal's operation into an abrupt halt. The Suez Canal facilitates the transit of about 50 ships, carrying an estimated $3 billion worth of cargo on a daily basis. Now with the blockage, the ships and cargoes that were scheduled to transit the canal are now stranded, with more and more ships arriving each day, and all of them won't be able to continue their voyages until the canal's operation resumes. Efforts are currently underway to refloat the grounded ship, but so far it hasn't met with any success yet. So how much of a loss are we talking about for each day that ships are grounded? And more importantly, who's going to pay for all of it? As of recording this video, it has been three days since the Ever Given was grounded. And I've seen some articles claiming that the losses have reached up to $400 million per hour. <laughs> okay, first of all, that is highly exaggerated. I don't even know where they got that. In truth, it's actually difficult to put a precise figure. Like I said earlier, the canal facilitates the transit of an estimated $3 billion worth of cargo each day. But each ship carries different cargoes with different values. Some ships even pass through the canal without any cargo at all. Now, the cargoes carried by the stranded ships are not destroyed or lost, they're just delayed. As we can see, these are the ships that are currently stranded waiting in line for their transit. That means they are the only ones so far who are incurring losses. So part of the losses we're talking about are just from the freight cost, which according to some economists could range somewhere around 0.6 to 2.3% of the value of goods on board a given ship. Even so, it's probably going to reach in the tens of millions. And since more and more ships will arrive at the Suez Canal each day, the costs will rise exponentially until the Ever Given is removed and the canal resumes operation. Now, the freight cost is just part of the losses. The other thing is the salvage operation. You know, the cost of getting the ship free of the grounding. It's going to take a lot of work to refloat the Ever Given, and that's going to involve a lot of heavy equipment. Again, it's difficult to put a precise figure, but due to the ship's enormous size and the amount of cargo it's carrying, the salvage value can easily go beyond seven digits. In any case, it's going to cost a shit ton of money. And the million dollar question is, who's going to pay for all of that? Here's the thing, ships that transit the Suez Canal are required to take a pilot. This pilot will take over the navigation of the ship during transit. Now you might be asking, since there was a canal pilot on board when the ship ran aground, isn't he or the Suez Canal Authority supposed to be liable for the incident? Well, unfortunately, no. Even though the pilot is responsible for the navigation while inside the canal, the captain is still responsible for the overall safety of the ship, and he has what we call the master's overriding authority. Which means, if he thinks that the situation is unsafe and could lead to an incident, he has the authority to take over from the pilot. But that's a bit tricky since the ship is inside the canal, right? So, yeah. Also, pursuant to the Egyptian Maritime Code as well as rulings of the Supreme Court in Egypt, the responsibility for pilotage operation in port and in the Suez Canal lies entirely with the master of the guided vessel even in case of the pilot's error. And according to the Suez Canal Authority documents that were posted online, Masters are held solely responsible for all damage or accidents of whatever kind resulting from the navigation or handling of their vessels, 
directly or indirectly by day or night. And because the canal pilot cannot know the defects or difficulties of maneuverability for every vessel, the final responsibility rests with the top officer on the ship. You might think it's unfair, but that's just the way it is. And not just for Egypt, but basically for every other country that allows foreign ships to trade within their borders. Now, we don't exactly know the full details which led to the incident. Was it weather, pilot error, engine failure? We don't really know the whole story yet. That will be determined by the investigators when they review the Voyage Data Recorder, or VDR. It's the ship's equivalent of an airplane's black box. Now, there were early reports that the ship suffered a blackout, but the ship's manager said that initial investigations ruled out any mechanical or engine failure. So it appears that weather is partly to blame. Apparently, the strong winds blowing on the huge ship which, when fully stacked with containers, is actually kind of like a wall that the wind can push against, caused the ship to deviate from its course and made steering very difficult, which eventually led to the grounding. Whatever the case, all liabilities point towards the vessel, which means the ship's owner, along with their insurers, are in for quite a ride as they will be facing claims from the Suez Canal Authority, as well as insurers and owners of ships stranded in the canal and incurring losses due to the blockage. Now, talking about insurance, ships have the H&M or Hull and Machinery Insurance and the P&I, Protection and Indemnity Insurance. The salvage operation cost, as well as repairs to the ship, will be borne by the H&M. And according to sources, a container ship of this size is likely insured for hull and machinery damage of around 100 to $140 million. Now, the other claims will presumably be borne by the P&I, if it's included in the coverage. If not, then the ship's owner will have to bear the cost. At the moment, it's getting crowded in the anchorage area of the north and south entrances of the Suez Canal. And each day that passes, more and more ships will arrive lining up for their transit. Some ships that are so far might choose to deviate and go the long way around South Africa, but a good number will most likely stay on course and head for Suez Canal, adding to the pileup. Sources say that this blockage is potentially the world's biggest ever container ship disaster without a ship going bang. It probably already is, and depending on how long the ship stays grounded, it will hold that reputation for a very long time. Hopefully, they get the ever given out of its predicament and get the Suez Canal back in operation really, really soon. If this situation goes any longer, pretty soon, we will all feel its effects. Because as we all probably know by now, ships transiting the Suez Canal account for about 12% of the global trade. And any increase in cost arising from disturbances in that trade route will eventually be passed on to the consumers. That's us. You, me, everyone.